Hello everyone, welcome to Power Electronics Tutorials. In this video, I am going to briefly discuss the different types of power converter circuits which are also called as power electronic circuits. But before we begin, let us have a brief look at why and what are the need for such converters. We know that for the control of electric power supplied to the load or equipment or some type of machinery or even for power conditioning, the conversion of electric power from one form to another is quite necessary and the switching characteristics of the power semiconductor devices facilitate these conversions. In fact, there exist different types of power converter circuits as what is listed here starting with a diode rectifier which is also called as an uncontrolled rectifier. Then we have controlled rectifiers which use control switching devices. Then we have AC to AC converters which are also called as AC voltage or RMS voltage controllers. Then we have cyclo converters which are also AC to AC converters but now the output voltage frequency is lesser than that of the input voltage frequency. Then we have DC choppers which are also called as DC to DC converters. Lastly inverters which are DC to AC converters and finally we have static switches. Let us now go and discuss each of these power converters in brief detail and I'll start with AC to DC converters which are also called as rectifiers. A power electronic circuit that converts AC to DC is called a rectifier. Depending upon the type of the power electronic switches used in the circuitry, they are further subdivided into uncontrolled rectifiers and controlled rectifiers. In an uncontrolled rectifier, the switches used are uncontrollable in the sense they conduct for the complete half cycle of the input cycle and hence the output is quite fixed. Most often, the uncontrolled rectifiers use diodes as switching elements as they turn on and off at the very beginning of the input cycle. Figure here shows an example circuit for an uncontrolled rectifier in an ideal condition. As you can see, we have a full wave uncontrolled rectifier. At the beginning of the positive off cycle, diode D1 conducts and the complete positive off cycle appears across the output in an ideal scenario. In a very similar fashion, when the negative off cycle across the input starts, diode D2 conducts and the complete negative off cycle appears inversely across the output because it's an AC to DC converter and therefore there is absolutely no control over the output voltage waveform and this is because of this particular constraint we say a diode rectifier as an uncontrolled rectifier. Moving on to a controlled rectifier on the other hand, these rectifiers use controlled switching devices such as an SCR and provide an adjustable DC output voltage by controlling the phase or the triggering angle at which the switching devices are turned on. This is in fact the same old circuit what we discussed for uncontrolled rectifier except that now we are using thyristors in place of diodes and as we know a thyristor requires a gate voltage to turn on in addition to anode to cathode voltage and it is in fact the instant at which the gate voltage is provided that the thyristor turns on. And because of this, the analyst can now control the overall output voltage across the load resistance. Further, depending upon the type of the input supply, the thyristors can be turned off either naturally or by using forced commutation techniques which I will discuss in one of my future videos. You should note the applications of AC to DC converters are speed control of DC motors in DC drives, HVDC transmission and lastly battery chargers. With that now let us move on to the second type of power converter which is AC to AC power converter which is also called as an AC regulator. An AC to AC converter which is also called as an AC voltage controller or RMS voltage controller is a power electronic circuit that converts a constant frequency fixed voltage AC into variable voltage AC but at the same frequency. These converters either use thyristors, tracks, SCRs or IGBTs as switching devices. Most commonly, 
these converters use either the on off control or the phase control techniques to obtain variable output voltage an example circuit for an ac voltage controller is shown in diagram here which uses a track as the switching element now we know that a track is a bidirectional current carrying capability device and therefore when the positive half cycle starts the track is ready to conduct and will start conducting once a gate pulse is given to it. Let us assume the gate pulse is given at some angle alpha. So the output voltage across the positive half cycle appears from the value alpha till the end of that corresponding half cycle which is still pi. The same principle can also be extended for the negative half cycle and assuming that the track is once again triggered at pi plus alpha during the negative half cycle across the input. So if you look at the output voltage waveform here, it is still AC but the average as well as the RMS output voltage varies as compared to that of the input and that is why we say this is an AC to AC voltage controller. Further, as I already had said, we have cyclo converters, which is also an AC to AC converter, but the output voltage frequency here is lesser than the input voltage frequency. Apart from that particular variation, there is absolutely no change when it comes to the operation. However, because the output frequency is less than that of the input frequency, cyclo converters are usually used for low frequency applications such as traction vehicles and gearless rotary kilns. Moving on to the next type of power converter which is a DC to DC converter also called as a DC chopper. DC choppers are power circuits that obtain power from a fixed voltage DC supply and convert it into a variable DC voltage. Since the input voltage type is DC, they employ forced commutation to turn off the thyristors used as switching elements in the circuit. DC choppers are further classified into several types depending upon the direction of power flow as well as the type of commutation employed. Choppers are widely used in speed control of DC motors from a DC supply, DC drives for suburban traction as well as switching power supplies. A simple illustration example for a DC chopper is given here which uses a BJT as a switching element. We have used a DC supply at the input and the voltage across the base to emitter is given on a certain frequency basis. That is, this transistor is used as a switch and the switching action is periodic in nature. Whenever the base emitter voltage is positive, the transistor simply acts as a closed circuit and an output voltage appears across the load, which is what is shown here. Depending upon whether the output voltage across the load is greater than that of the input or less than that of the input, choppers can be classified into step up and step down choppers respectively. Moving on to the next type of power converter which is DC to AC converter commonly called as an inverter. Inverters are used for converting DC power from a fixed voltage DC supply into an AC output voltage of variable frequency and fixed or variable output AC voltage. Inverters also employ forced commutation techniques to turn off the thyristors as the type of the input supply is DC. Applications of inverters are in industrial AC drives using induction and synchronous motors, uninterrupted power supplies which are commonly used for computers and computer labs. An example illustration for a DC to AC converter is shown using MOSFETs here. As you can see this is nothing but a bridge rectifier circuit which uses four MOSFETs in place of switches. The gating signals for the MOSFETs are shown here. Please note transistors Q1 and Q2 are to be turned on simultaneously and therefore the gating signal for them are given at the same point. Very similarly Q3 and Q4 are supposed to be turned on and the gating signal for the same is shown here. Whenever Q1 and Q2 are turned on, the left side edge of the load is connected to the positive terminal of the DC supply, right side edge is connected to the negative terminal of the DC supply and the load voltage is ideally equal to the supply voltage and let us assume by convention this to be a positive output voltage. 
on the other hand when q1 and q2 are turned off at t by 2 and at the same exact instance q3 and q4 are turned on the load now is connected to the supply in the exact reverse order as when q1 and q2 were on that is the right side edge is connected to the positive terminal of the supply and the left side edge is connected to the negative terminal of the supply therefore the output voltage is equal to the input voltage but with a reverse polarity so v naught is equals to minus vs and this is what is indicated in the waveforms here so when you look at the output voltage waveform the output is positive and equal to vs for half of the duration and negative and is equal to minus Vs for the remaining half of the switching duration and therefore we can say now we have associated a frequency into the output voltage and thus this can be considered as an AC voltage. Lastly we come to static switches. Since power switches can be operated as static switches or simply contactors the supply to these static switches can either be AC or DC and the switches are also called as AC static switches or DC static switches respectively. A static switch has two inputs for the load supply, a priority and a non-priority input and synchronizes the frequency of one supply to the other. This is the basic principle of operation of a static switch. Right, with that we have come to the end of this discussion on the different types of power electronic circuits. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.